In this movie, I will explain the neutron diffusion equation that can be used to calculate the power dis distribution in a nuclear reactor core. First, we define the neutron flux density, sometimes briefly called the neutron flux. In contrast to other fields in physics, the neutron flux density is not a vector, but a sca scalar. It's equal to the product of the neutron density and the velocity of the neutrons. Therefore, it can be viewed of as the total distance traveled by all neutrons in a un unit volume per unit time. Typically, the neutron flux density is depending on space, energy and time. For simple applications with no energy dependence, the one-group approximation can be used, in which it is assumed that all neutrons have the same energy. In the remainder of this video, we will adopt this one-group approximation. The definition of the neutron flux density is illustrated in this figure. Suppose we have an arbitrary volume traversed by neutrons. If we sum the segments of all neutrons through the volume per second and divide by the size of the volume, we get the neutron flux density. It's the total distance traveled by all neutrons per unit volume and per unit time. Previously, we have seen that a microscopic cross-section of a nuclide is the effective area of the nuclide for interaction with neutrons. You can easily imagine that the number of reactions of a neutron beam with the atoms in a material will be proportional to this microscopic cross-section, but also to the atomic density of the material. The product of these two factors is called the macroscopic cross-section of the material. And we will use this macroscopic cross-section on the next slide to calculate the reaction rate density in the material. On the previous slides, we have seen that the neutron flux density is the total distance traveled by all neutrons per unit volume and per unit time, and that the macroscopic cross-section is the interaction rate per unit distance traveled by the neutrons. This means that the product of these two factors gives the total number of reactions per unit volume per second, and this parameter is called the reaction rate density of the neutrons. Because the neutron flux depends on space, energy and time, and because the macroscopic cross-section typically also depends on space and energy, the reaction rate density is also depending on these parameters. Because the macroscopic cross-section can be split into the individual contributions due to neutron capture, fission and scattering, also the reaction rate can be subdivided in these two separate contributions. And the units of these partial contributions are the same as for the total reaction rate. And the sum of all partial reaction rates is equal to the total reaction rate. Now we will derive an expression for the leakage of neutrons from a volume element. For simplicity, we will derive this expression in one dimension first. Imagine neutrons streaming from left to right. If the neutrons streaming out of an element delta x is larger at the right boundary than it is at the left boundary, there is a net positive outflow of neutrons. The leakage per unit size of the element delta x is equal to the derivative of the neutron current, called j. On the next slide, we will derive a simple expression for the neutron current based on Fick's law. Now we will derive an expression for the flow of neutrons from one region to the other. In the fusion theory, the transport of particles is described as being proportional to the gradient of the particle number density. In reactor physics, this would translate into a neutron current density that is proportional to the gradient of the neutron flux density. The formula for J gives the expression in one dimension, namely in the x-direction. We will now derive a neutron balance equation in the fusion theory, by looking at each loss and gain term in a unit volume. Left of the balance is a time derivative of the neutron number density. If this time derivative is zero, we have a stationary neutron flux, otherwise it is increasing or decreasing in time. The first term on the right-hand side describes the flow of neutron in the x-direction. We would have similar terms with y and z in a three-dimensional problem. The term in blue, between brackets, is a neutron current density in the fusion theory using Fick's law. Note that we have two minus signs here, 
because a leakage is counted as a loss term in the balance equation, which adds another minus sign in front of it. The second term on the right-hand side is the absorption rate of neutrons, which is also a loss term, and which has therefore also a minus sign in front of it. And the third term on the right-hand side is the fission neutron source term. This is equal to the fission rate density multiplied by the average number of neutrons released in a fission event, indicated by nu. For most reactors, using uranium as a fuel, nu has a value of about 2.5. This equation shows the same expression for the three-dimensional case, where d phi dx is now replaced by the nabla operator. Nabla stands for the three-dimensional derivative in all three directions, x, y and z. If we would have a homogeneous reactor core, the diffusion coefficient would not be spatially dependent anymore, and the equation would become as in the bottom line. There is one important step to make. In the design process of a nuclear reactor core, it would be very difficult to find a fuel composition that would make the reactor core exactly critical and the neutral flux density independent of time. Therefore, we apply a kind of trick. We adapt the production of the fission neutrons a bit, such that the production rate of fission neutrons at one hand balances the leakage and absorption rates of the neutrons at the other. For this purpose, we add the factor in red, 1 divided by k in front of the fission neutron production term. K is equal to the production of neutrons in fission events divided by the loss of neutrons due to leakage and ab absorption. It's therefore equal to the effective multiplication factor that we've seen before in the video on the neutron life cycle. From the neutron flux density, we can calculate the power density in a, in a reactor core. There is a simple relationship between the neutron flux density and the power density by first calculating the fission reaction rate and multiplying this with the energy release per fission. I want to end this video with a question to think over. Our research reactor at TU Delft has a power of 2 megawatts. How many grams of uranium do we fission per day?